Hi everyone! This time we'll take a short break from shaders and look at an equally interesting technology, particle systems in Godot 4. It's not the first time I showcase something like this. For example, the fire and smoke we had here quite recently. In this tutorial, we'll create a quite useful effect, a trail behind a moving object, with the trail based on the same shape as the object itself. So let's get to it. This time, I won't be creating a new project, but I'll demonstrate the creation of this particle effect in a game I'm currently working on. This is the game. As you may have guessed, it's a breakout or arcanoid style game. It's based on breaking a wall of bricks using a ball that's bounced back by a pedal under our control. If you'd like to try it out, I've made a demo available on Steam, where you can download it and also add the game to your wishlist. You'll find the link in the description of this video. Ok, let's finish that. From the effect of the flying bricks, you can tell they are 3D models, but I'm placing them in a 2D plane, so it's actually a 2.5D game, which is my favorite type. After all, my first tutorial and book on creating a space shooter are based on the same concept. But what we are interested in is the ball, where you can notice a slowly fading trail made up of small particles. And yes, that's exactly what this tutorial will be about. But enough about the game. We are back in the project, where I'll open the scene with the ball. Let's show the 3D view. As you can see, it's a 3D scene that contains everything needed for a standalone asset, which we can then insert into another scene in any number of copies. Here we have a Mesh Instance 3D made up of a simple sphere. Technically it's an icosphere, but it's still one of the basic elements we can create in Blender with a single click. Then there is a Collision Shape 3D for collision detection. And finally a GPU Particles 3D, which handles emitting the trail behind the moving object. So let me show you again what it looks like. I select a a root node and move the element using the gizmo. Okay, can you see the trail? Now it's pretty visible and we can see how it disappears over time. Great. Notice that the particles stay in place and simply fade out, which is actually the core of the whole effect. I'll now disable this node, the particle node, in the scene and create it again to clarify all the necessary steps. And I think we can temporarily disable the move gizmo by clicking on this icon, show list of selectable nodes. Ok, so let's add a new GPU Particle 3D and name it Trail. Right click at Child node, GPU Particle 3D and I rename it to Trail. Very well. As we know from the fire and smoke tutorial, a GPU particle system requires setting a process material and at least one draw pass. So let's add a new particle process material. That would be here in the inspector, process material, new particle process material. OK. And now there is a change because instead of adding an emission shape manually, we'll let Godot do it for us. Let's just open the material and find in the spawn position there it should be somewhere. We'll see it very briefly. Okay, so let's click the GPU Particles 3D button in the top bar of the 3D editor and select Create Emission Points from Node. A dialog appeared where we need to select the node that will define the emission points. As we can see, only just this icosphere can be selected because it's 
of the mesh instance 3D object type and nothing else is allowed. So let's select it and create, click OK. Another dialog appeared where we need to set the number of emission points. And I think we can increase the default value from 512 to 1024. Then there is the emission source where we choose between the surface points or the surface with the movement in direction of the normal vectors or throughout the entire volume of the object. For our purposes, the default option surface point is sufficient. So let's click create. And now we can verify in the inspector that the new values have appeared in the spawn position section. The property emission shape is now points. Uh, and we, before we usually left it at the default value of point, but now we have multiple points. And here we can see that the Godot created 124 points on the surface of our sphere. The particles will appear at these points. But to actually see anything, we also need to set up the draw pass. We'll create a new one in the uh, a new one as a quad mesh. So scroll down to draw passes and pass one. Let's create new quad mesh. Okay, <laughs> we definitely want points instead of squares. We want a different color and other properties set differently. So let's go ahead and change that. Uh, on the draw pass, let's click the first pass and let's change the size to uh, 0 0.01 by 0 0.01. So I, now it turns to points. In the material section, I'll create a new standard material 3D. Click it. And let's start by setting the transparency to alpha so that we can apply a fade out effect to the particles. Then in the shading part, we will change the shading mode to an shade it so the particles don't react to light sources. In the vertex color, we select use as albedo so we can later set color gradients. And finally, in the albedo section, let's color the particles. And I think that the color I used in the game was 0, 0, AE, AE. Yeah, this kind. I think if I uh, zoom in, we can see them better, how they are falling down. All right, and of course, we want all particles to face the camera. So let's scroll down to the billboard section. And here, so I, let's select the particle billboard and also check the keep scale option. So we make the particles scalable. And of course, uh, we definitely want more particles than just the default eight. Let's change it to 1000. Now, this is something completely different. So the particles are already nicely falling from the entire surface. If we just disable the sphere, we can see it, how it's falling from the surface. OK, but for now, they are falling under gravity, whereas we want them to stay in place. So let's set the gravity to zero in accelerations and gravity. And it should be here, accelerations and gravity zero. Now it stopped. Very well, we are almost at the finish line. When we bring back the move gizmo uh, by clicking on this arrow, and select the root node. We can now uh, try how the particles behave when the ball moves. Okay, it's not bad, but it's not quite right yet. Maybe the particles are living too long, so we'll reduce the lifetime to 0.8 seconds. Uh, where is it? Oh, sorry, I have to select the particles node, of course. And here in time, we have lifetime one second. So I said 0.8, make it a bit shorter. Next, it would be a good idea to also reset direction to zero in the spawn velocity, just to be sure. So uh, spawn velocity here, 
and the direction is the by default 100. Let's make it 000. All right. And it appears that all the particles are the same size. So let's add a bit of randomness by setting the scale to range from 0.1 to 1. We can find scale under the display section. Display scale and here, 0.1 to 1. Very well. And finally, to achieve the particles fading out completely, we'll open the display color curves, this part, and set the alpha curve to decrease over time. So I'll create a new curve texture, click it, create a new curve, click it again. And now, as I said, it should start at one and gradually go to zero. Very well. And we are done. We can select the root node again and try it out. Yeah, now it is nicely fading out and that's exactly what we wanted. Very well, and let's test it in the game. Yeah, it definitely works. I think we can be satisfied with the result. And if it seems like the particles aren't visible enough, we can change the scale interval. For example, from 1 to 1.5. Let's try it. Uh, scale, 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 blah, 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 here. So I set 1 and 1.5. Now they look definitely bigger. And if we want a longer trail, let's try increasing the number of particles to 2000. Okay, and the lifetime to 2 seconds. All right, what happens in the editor? Let's select the root node and yeah, surely it is a longer trail and it is brighter. What about in the game? Now, this is something a longer trail and a more visible tray. Yeah, perfect. I think this should be enough for the purposes of the tutorial, and everyone can of course try out their own modifications. The important thing is that we can apply the same procedure to any shape of Mesh Instance 3D, allowing us to achieve an effect tailored exactly to the needs of our game. Thank you very much for watching. Particle systems are very powerful, and if we are not afraid to experiment, we can achieve many interesting and useful effects with them. Once I manage to create something original, I'll definitely make another video about it. For now, take care, good luck with your projects, and I'll see you in the next video.